So welcome back friends. So today we're going to be back on the Ford Transit Adventure Van build and I'm very excited. I've got my very first cabinet done uh, which is going to be on the rear quarter panel. So this was kind of a lot of figuring but it fit out fit in pretty good. Let's take it inside and fit it and then I'll show you what it's for and where it goes. So I do apologize for the disjointed content lately with the, all of the wildland fires and constantly being on call and, and the, the projects trying to get ready for winter. Um, I, uh, I've just been busier than I'd like to be, but uh, well, we do what we can. Let's see how this fits in here. Oh, that's nice, look at that. Let's take a closer look. So this cabinet is built out of three quarter inch birch. This is probably the only cabinet that I'll build out of this thick of plywood because I'm really conscious about weight. I don't, want to, I don't want to load this up too much, but there's so much weight in this. This is gonna be supporting the water tank. Good grief, Miss Pants and the Heart Racer. So what I'm able to get is I found a tank that was 12 by 12 by, I think it's 20, 19 or 20 or so. It's just about 12 gallons, roughly. That's all that I can fit in here. There just no, is no other room. So I made a template. This is essentially the size. So it'll be the 12 and that fits in there perfectly. So that will sit right in there. So the water tank will be right here. Now on the back side, I've left myself a little jog, some room there. There's gonna be a quick, there's going to be a water mixer, hot and cold. So there'll be a uh, external shower out here with a quick attach. So you'll be able to hook a hose with a shower head on it and have um, unlimited water through the um, S-bar, the S-bar -S water heater, heat exchanger. That's all gonna fit in here. The hot water tank, all those utilities, all the water pumps, all that stuff will fit in here. And there should be some extra room for cargo. All this will be, of course, finish. I don't know what the finish is gonna be yet, but I'll probably do some sort of a dark gray or black, dark, close to black charcoal finish. Maybe a coin mat, I don't know yet, but uh, that's kind of what that, this is going to be right here. So today we have a very different project and I'll show you the raw material for that one. So this here is the raw material for the three piece removable queen size bed. Uh, this is a, a one by one uh, tubing, square tubing, eighth inch wall thickness aluminum. So I've got varying lengths here. I ordered it up from a local yard, uh, or they ordered in for me. Nobody stocks this stuff. It's hard, well, it sure was hard to hard to find. Uh, and then I've also got some channel here that will that will use for hooking on the cleats in there or the ledgers. So let's kind of get this laid out. I'll show you what what it's going to do, and uh, and we'll get started on this, and then get it all welded up. One nice thing about working with aluminum is you can cut it with a just a traditional woodworking miter saw. The teeth on the blade are carbide, which are very hard. Uh, the aluminum is actually quite soft. So if you're careful, take your time, you can, you can cut it. So what I've done is I've set up a, a stop here uh, using the table this two by four, because I've got to cut several pieces exactly the same. The tolerances need to be really tight on this. So this, these pieces here, I've made myself a stop and I'll go ahead and just cut them all very quickly here. So I went ahead and cut uh, the pieces for the first two panels. There's going to be three panels here. Two of them is, are the same. The last one is a kind of a custom size because it's got to jog around and fit into the doors. And that's what we'll work on together here. Um, I'll bring you over and show you that. Uh, but everything is dry fitted here. Um, you can see these panels are 20 inches. So there'll be a, the bed will be 60 inches wide. Uh, it'll be pr almost a full queen. Um, and the reason why this system here is so I can easily remove the panels. Um, my last van, I had a belt bed that was built in and it, it really made the uh, van kind of useless if you needed to haul something with it. This will have spring pins in it, for that's what's in my mind. So we can pull the spring pins, snap, 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 lift the panels out, and even stack them against the wall with a, some sort of a strap or a tie down or take them out altogether if we don't want to use it. So that's why I'm going to the effort. We're using aluminum, the uh, eighth inch wall because it's pretty strong uh, and it's very light. It's a lot lighter than steel and I don't have to worry about coating it. I might power coat it, we'll see. It's getting a little beat up here on the, on the floor but uh, we'll see how it turns out. So let's go in the van and, and we'll take a look. I'll show you how uh, the problem we have with the rear panel, not the problem but just a solution to come up with um, and then we'll figure that out uh, together and then um, 
get everything deburred and ready for welding. So I've got the rear crossbar just kind of wedged in here. And then we'll, I'll have to close the doors because if we, when you close the doors, you'll see that this is kind of round here on the back. And we don't want to stop the bed just right here and waste that additional space. I need that space to move the bed. Mrs. W, she can sleep over here because she's quite a bit shorter than I am where it comes a little bit narrower and still kind of utilize, still have that full width bed. But uh, if I can push it back and build it to contour and kind of follow those doors, you know, we pick up another seven inches or so on the front of the van, which is, um, every, I mean, when you're doing these things, it all comes down to inches and fraction of inches. So what we need to do with this last panel is figure out exactly this jog right here. And so I've got it pretty well set up in here. So what I've done is always given myself room because we're going to be adding upholstery. So we don't want to make everything too tight. And so I've uh, allowed three quarters of an inch here from this uh, ABCD pillar. And now we just need to figure the depth. So I've got that marked. So if we figure the bed is going to come across here, we can use this four foot level to help us kind of average it all out right there. We don't want to be tight to the door, uh, but we want to give ourselves a little bit of room, but we want to use up as your use as much as possible of that space. All right, so that's roughly there, right there. So let's say if we came out from here for the bed to six inches, if we finished at six inches and we can finish six inches here, we could overhang that plywood a little bit. That's really tight right there. So six and a Six and a quarter, I hate to go more than six inches. I think six inches will do it. And there's still enough room to reach your hand down in there and get the latch in case you want to let yourself out the back door. So that's something to consider too. So that back piece comes out to five and three sixteenths with six inch legs. So this is going to be that back piece. And then we figured we wanted that to be six inches off the back, minus one. So that'll be a five inch, five, we'll leave four at five. So this should be our last four cuts here. So we'll set up our stop. We need four, we got some scrap ends here that we can use and we just need four at five inches. Taking the time to make yourself a little stop really helps with consistency. I always check that first piece. Five on the button. Okay. Now we can cut away. Now this probably makes a little bit more sense how that's gonna this is gonna be cantilevered out but it's such a small it's only five inches it's I, I i think it's okay i don't know how else to do it there's just isn't any other way these will all line up so that will look nice because you're going to see it when you open that rear door you'll see that these all these guys line up so we do have that was not the last cut we do have uh, two more pieces to cut. Now the question is that we have to answer is that this panel here, of course, is a little bit smaller this in here than these guys are. I decided to run three cross members per on those, but do we really need a third cross member here? Um, or is two of these, this is doubled up enough to carry the weight. Oh man. Decisions, decisions. I would say for, why not? We've got the aluminum. I'd say just for aesthetics as well as a little extra strength. Let's cut another one in there. Yeah, let's cut another one in there and we'll cut four little pieces and then just do it right. Do it right the first time. 
Oh yeah. I think we can all agree that was the, that was the right call there. Okay, so now we just need to figure these two little, or four, we got four little pieces and then we're all done. So what are we at? 14 inches, so half that's seven minus a half. So that's be four at six and a half inches. So that's about all as far as I can go on this today. I've, um, I don't have the ability to weld aluminum. I don't have a spool gun or, or a, a TIG welder. And I um, was uh, called around a couple of the welding shops that the fab shops uh, in town and they can do it, but um, you know, they're like two, three weeks out before they can even jump on it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, Brian, uh, who works for me a couple days a week, he's got quite a bit of experience uh, TIG welding. He's uh, built quite a few, several bike frames and has went to, kind of went to school on that. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go into town the next day or two and I'm just gonna pick up kind of a, probably just a Miller um, small uh, TIG welder and have him show me how to do this and, and that way. It'd be nice to have a TIG welder around. Uh, there's a lot of projects that I've wanted to do uh, with well, with aluminum and stainless that I haven't been able to before. So I, I think I'll just make that investment and, and uh, buy one of those. And then we'll, uh, we'll weld all this up. I, um, and, then, and then we'll have everything pretty well squared away. Uh, after that, uh, one question that I had, might have for any of you guys that uh, have experience with a pul doing upholstery work, I've never done any upholstery before. Uh, what I want to do with this is I want to, I'm going to put, um, of course, we know these are three individual panels. I want to put uh, three quarter inch birch plywood on here that I'll bolt directly to these panels in three individual pieces. Again, so that we can take them out, that they're modular. But I'd like to upholster those panels. I'd like to put some sort of like a really thin, maybe an eighth inch or even maybe quarter inch high density, medium density foam. Um, and then a fabric, uh, a complete fabric wrap around them so that they're, they're soft to sit on, you know, so if we don't have the mattress in or if someone wants to use it kind of as an impromptu bench that we can do that kind of a, I'll, I want to use like a, maybe a fabric, like something you'd see on a church pew, you know, a dark charcoal gray that's going to be super durable and, and stain resistant. Uh, but I don't really know how to do that. Um, where I to wrap that all sides because it's going to be visible when you open up the back of the door of the van You'll be able to see the upholstery on the bottom through the framework as well as the top So I don't want to see the wood and I do want to wrap those whole things and then bolt them down through there And that plywood is going to give this also quite a bit of an additional strength um, it, when it, Once it's all tied in together. So if you have experience with that um, or know of any videos that kind of uh, show how to do that or can send me an email or maybe we can have a phone conversation. You can kind of tell me what I need to do and how the best way to go about that. I would, I would appreciate it because um, I, 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 something I would kind of like to learn. Uh, so that's it. So we'll, uh, we'll pick it up on the next video or whenever <laughs> when I get the welder. Uh, we'll do a video on that TIG welding and, and I'm really lucky to have Brian. He can show me, kind of show me the ropes on that and we'll get that welded up. I think, I think it's going to turn out really nice. How I'm going to tie these, hold these in there so that they don't fall out or bounce around is I'm going to use spring pins. So a spring pin is just basically, you've seen them before, it'll bolt to the bottom or weld to the bottom of one of these channels and it'll go into that aluminum channel, the ledgers on the side, pin in, spring in there and that'll hold it secure. And that way it won't, uh, won't come out on us and it'll be easy to take, to put in and to take out. So that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.